When you woke up this morning, chances are the first thing you did involved water. Taking a shower, brushing your teeth, making a cup of coffee. We use a lot of water, but some of us more than others. An American uses 570 liters a day, a Saudi Arabian 192 liters, a Malian just 20. Drought, torrential rains, and climate change can disrupt or cut off our supply of clean water, as it is one out of nine people in the world don't have access to it. A global water crisis is just around the corner, so we have to start by reducing our consumption at a personal level, but also in water-heavy industries like agriculture. At the same time, water takes up 71% of the Earth's surface, with almost all water in our oceans and seas. So more and more countries and regions are turning to desalination for their water supply. Desalination is the process of removing salt and impurities from seawater or so-called brackish water so that it can be used for drinking or irrigation. There are close to 19,000 desalination plants in the world processing 15% more water than a year ago. Saudi Arabia has the most. The kingdom processes 12 million cubic meters of water a day. The technology is vital to communities who live in dry regions or islands. Spain has installed 330 plants in the Canaries. And some countries have mastered the technique, like Israel. Sandwiched between the Mediterranean and the desert, Israel is home to the world's biggest desalination plant. More than half of the water used in homes, agriculture, and industry come from the sea. Take some desalinated water. This used to be seawater about an hour ago. Look closer, though, and you'll notice all these countries have something in common. They're rich, and desalination is expensive. The average cubic meter sells for two and a half euros. That's twice as much as retreated sewer water or rainwater. Israel's neighbor, Gaza, got a new desalination plant in January 2017, financed by the European Union and UNICEF. It cost 10 million euros, but it won't be enough to solve the territory's water crisis. We have fallen far behind the demand for clean drinking water for Gazans. The situation today is really very serious. This is one step forward uh, on a very big journey, and, uh, and we, are, we need to have a lot more uh, projects like this. In addition to being expensive, desalinating water can disturb the natural ecosystem by killing millions of fish eggs and larvae. It's also an energy-consuming process. First, you have to pump the seawater, then carry it in pipes to the plant before it goes back out for use. It takes an average of three and a half kilowatt hours of electricity to desalinate one cubic meter of seawater. These last few years, however, technological advances have been lowering the environmental price tag thanks to a method called inverted osmosis. Seawater passes through membranes that catch the salt and other impurities, and only the water molecules get through. Today, more than half of desalination plants use this technique. Even better, more and more plants are running on renewable energy. Saudi Arabia is preparing the world's biggest solar desalination plant, capable of producing up to 60,000 cubic meters of clean water a day, using only energy from the sun, enough for 100,000 people. There is a last negative consequence, though, that isn't going away despite these technological breakthroughs, the salty residue. Whatever didn't make it to our kitchen tap is two to three times saltier than in nature and can harm the ecosystem when it's dumped back into the sea. Often, the residue also includes chemicals like chlorine. As of yet, there's no international law on regulating the industry. Long considered an energy-hungry and carbon dioxide-heavy solution for thirsty communities, today desalination is cheaper, cleaner, and more efficient than ever before. So is it the key to avoiding a major water crisis? Using fossil fuel to desalinize, to desalinate water is stupid. 
because these fossil fuels are also adding to the problem by, by increasing the climate change. The technology which is now fashionable is reverse osmosis, where you push the water through a membrane, which with small, small holes. And there you cannot do it if the water is polluted. So you have to pre-treat it. So you have to first clean the, the water before you, you, you get the, the fresh water out of it. They have a policy for water, which is incredible, which is like science fiction. It's, a, it's probably 50 years ahead of all of us. Not only do they desalinate water, the wastewater goes down. They have built huge drains under the city. They, they, they collect all the wastewater and they clean it. The same process as desalinating up through membranes. And after they mix these cleaned, reused water, they mix it with, with rain. There's that famous line, water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. If desalination continues its march to becoming a global solution, that line could be remembered in our history books.